Okay, so today I'm finally trying the brand new and much anticipated Alder Lake CPUs for the first time with you guys, I mean. So, uh, yes, I'm using the Intel Core i9-12900K, which is the flagship CPU model of these uh, new Alder Lake CPUs. And as you can probably imagine from uh, the start of this video, I am using the EVGA Z690 Dark Kimpy motherboard, which will be hitting the retail market very, very soon. Memory, just using a very basic DDR5 kit from G-Skill, just a 4800 CAS40 kit. This is the XMP profile, so uh, nothing too spectacular. Just running it at uh, DDR5 6200 at the moment, 36 and command rate 1. Memory controller frequency is half of the DRAM frequency and cache is running at 4.5. I can actually do 4.6 on the cache, but it's very on the edge. So that's why I just put it at 4.5. Now, uh, the highlight of this video is uh, my first impressions with this whole uh, uh, CPU and platform. Yeah, I, I honestly think it's a great launch from Intel. We finally have something completely new on Intel's side. So now we have higher core count, thankfully, compared to the uh, misery what we saw with the Rocky Lake CPUs, as the uh, 11900K had a core count of 8, down from the core count of 10 with the 10900K. So the 11900K actually lost to uh, 10900K in some multi-core situations. Now we have 16 cores and 24 threads, so we have 8 uh, P cores, with hyperthreading and then just eight E cores without hyperthreading. And uh, the E cores, they aren't just some uh, dummy cores, they do have good impact on performance in multi core situations, so they are very usable cores. So uh, the CPU overall looks very, very good and they seem to overclock quite well. So currently I'm running 5.4 gigahertz across all of the available uh, P cores and 4.2. Uh, on the E-Cores and these can actually go even higher and voltage is 1.33 volts minus 75% small droop so the vehicle under load is pretty much spot on what it's measuring at idle and that is die sense so let's fire up uh, Cinebench R20 look at the performance figures and uh, just the overall uh, power consumption uh, uh, values so let's open Benchmate R20 So now, so 5.4 and 42, temperature is already raising to around 80 degrees, so it's actually quite warm. I don't have proper mounting right now for this platform, so I'm just using uh, LN2 pot rods, which is causing me a bit of like difficulty in uh, the temperatures. So they aren't the best at the moment, but the uh, performance was 11,735. Now, let's go to, just want to show you, so uh, Elite X1, I will raise the E-Cores to uh, 43, E-Core voltage is, uh, or the Atom voltage thing is at 1.27, so now 4.3 on the E-Cores, and let's run R20 again, I just want to show you. So 4.3. I'm not even running any uh, heatsink on the VRM design, so uh, I think there's no need. And now we had a score of 11,857, so you can see a visible increase by just raising the E-Cores by 100 megahertz. Now uh, the uh, core temp was measuring something like uh, 330, 340 watts power consumption, 345 watts, so I actually uh, Tested this uh, with uh, the Elamor Labs PMD, so the power measurement device. I could run this CPU uh, at 5.5 uh, GHz, but uh, in order to pass 5.5 uh, in R20, none of the uh, cores, the maximum core temperatures, can exceed uh, 80 degrees or 78 degrees. So I have a score over here, which I already posted on my YouTube channel's community page. So over here, 5.5. Also for free on the E cores, and uh, maximum core temperatures were 77 degrees Celsius. So this generation is extremely picky on the temperatures. There's one uh, 
video on YouTube where some Korean guy runs 5.5 in R15, R20 and also Cinebench R23. And his maximum core temperature is only uh, 73 degrees Celsius. So uh, the difference is huge, even if you can drop the core temperatures down by like 5 degrees or so. So uh, if the temperatures are only like 75 max on the core temperatures, I mean individual cores, it can run 5.5 happily. But if the uh, max core temperatures go above 80, it's going to fail very, very quickly. Now I will switch on to the uh, camera view so I can show you the actual system as I filmed the uh, power consumption when I was running 5.5 uh, GHz on Cinebench R20 when I actually got that previous score. And also I want to show the uh, uh, Vico uh, idle versus under load with the debug LED. Okay, so, let, so if we uh, fire this up once again. 340 watts roughly. And here we have 350, 355, 360 watts, 350, 360 watts. So the difference is only like maybe 25 watts, between 15 and 25 watts. So uh, nothing, uh, nothing at all, almost. So very minimal differences, if you ask me, 340 roughly compared to 355. That's the actual system, so no... Uh, heating at the moment on the VRMs and that's the uh, voltage so currently it's set at 1.33 volts with minus 75 percent small droop option so uh, it's pretty much spot on uh, the same value under load than what it's than what it's uh, reading at idle and this uh, is uh, die sense pretty much so uh, now actually we scored 12,080 points so very very high so uh, 1.329, 1.3, 29, and now it's running 1.329. So pretty much same and a low that you know, what's what it's reading at idle. So uh, pretty good if you ask me. So uh, I really like this uh, accuracy. And that's pretty much it. So uh, yeah, pretty good I guess. I think. To be able to uh, squeeze those uh, load temperatures down by a little bit, you have to think about deleting. These sold these CPUs are soldered, yes, but as what well, as what we saw with the previous generations, usually deleting can uh, gain you maybe five degrees or eight degrees. The better your cooling solution is, the more you can actually gain. So uh, I'm not sure if anyone already uh, deleted any of these CPUs at least like successfully. No idea, but uh, I think if it's possible. It should gain you like five to eight degrees, so that would make my 5.5 like more like uh, consistent because uh, at the moment it, at the moment it's uh, way too on the edge. And I will also uh, do uh, IHS lapping very very soon with those with those uh, Matador uh, sandpapers, as the uh, current IHS thermal paste spread isn't looking too good, at least with this water block. So uh, just to wrap up looks pretty good i think so 5.4 to 5.5 5.4 is uh, fully stable like all day along and it only needs 1.3 volts actually the if i use higher v core than 1.33 uh, it actually goes worse so the temperatures go uh, quite high so uh, the extra v core doesn't uh, it only makes things worse if the temperatures uh, go too high now let's try 4.4 briefly but that's pretty much it for this uh like first impressions uh, video uh, regarding the Alder Lake and 12900K. So definitely an interesting platform and I'm looking forward to uh, running this with more exotic cooling methods and with different uh, graphics cards. So it uh, looks pretty good. So 4.4, four. but I guess it will fail. So let's open up that. Yeah, it doesn't want to run. But yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. So uh, stay tuned for more footage that, uh, that is coming from my end regarding this platform. I will be doing some uh, 
uh, memory overclocking uh, very very soon like uh, daily plus uh, some uh, Geekbench 3 and similar testing so stay tuned for that and uh, I'll try to do uh, uh, an LN2 test within uh, a week or so like a little over a week depending on how I can get LN2 during these holidays but uh, anyways stay tuned so uh, thanks for watching this very short uh, video and I'll see you very soon on the next one